Okay, so right now we're going to talk about Unit 7, Worksheet 4, Orbital Motion, problem number 5. So this is the last problem that we are going to be focusing on. Right here, we're going to try to figure out three things, all related to this problem. The problem is the Earth's orbit around the Sun is very nearly circular, with an average radius of 1.5 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. For part A, we're trying to determine the average speed of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. So I'm going to start off by drawing a very, very crude sketch of what this path is going to look like. Right here is going to be the sun. It is really bright, sends off a lot of heat that emanates throughout the solar system. The planet Earth is going to be some amount of distance away. That is our radius. And then the Earth is really, really small in comparison to the sun. It travels in a circle around the solar system. So it's just rotating around the sun. So in order to figure out what the average speed is, or the tangential velocity, we're going to look at the distance traveled divided by the time. In this problem, we know that if the Earth goes in a mostly circular path, we can use the distance that the Earth would travel based on the length of a circle. The length of a circle is the circumference, or 2 pi r. And the time is the time it takes for all the Earth to rotate around the sun once. That's how we measure a year. Whew. Sorry about the weird Y right there. So we're going to plug in our numbers and then simplify. 2 times pi times our radius of 1.5 times 10 to the 8th power kilometers. However, this should not be in kilometers. We need to make sure that we are getting our velocity in meters per second. So we'll multiply this by 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. And then we're going to divide that by our time, one year. But we don't want it in meters per year. We want it in meters per second. So we'll take this year and then convert it to first days by multiplying by 365 times the number of hours in one day, 24, the number of minutes in one hour, and then finally the number of seconds in one minute. So when we plug this into our calculators, this is going to be a rather big number. Whew. So that number, when I plug that into my calculator, and I would recommend you plug this into yours just to make sure that you're comfortable with these calculations, is going to be 29,880 six when we round up and the units are meters per second now that is an absolutely massive speed but that kind of makes sense because the earth is really really far from the sun so we do need to be kind of moving pretty fast in order to cover that amount of distance every year part b what is the magnitude of the earth's average acceleration in its orbit around the sun well, this is going to be a circular orbit, so we can use our equation for our circular acceleration, or the centripetal acceleration. That can be solved with our velocity squared divided by our radius. We figured out the velocity from the previous part, 29,886 meters per second. We will square all of that, and then divide by that radius. That radius is still 1.5 times 10 to the 8th power kilometers. And then we still need to multiply that by 1,000 meters for every kilometer to get it into meters. So when we plug this into a calculator, what we end up with for the centripetal acceleration is going to be really, really small. 0 0.00595. So we can probably just well leave that there, even though there are places past the decimal, uh, further past decimal than those. Oh, 5. My bad. And then the units of acceleration are meters per second squared. So this is going to be a really, really slow acceleration. And hopefully that makes conceptual sense. Because acceleration is how the velocity changes with time. If we're assuming that the velocity is more or less consistent, traveling at the same speed, what is changing about the velocity is the direction. And because the direction is changing so slowly, that should be a rather small acceleration. 
Now, the last part, part C, we're trying to figure out the gravitational force on the Earth by the sun. In order to do so, we're going to need to quantify that force of gravity. Now, while we could use the universal law of gravitation, Fg equals mass 1 times mass 2 times the gravitational constant divided by the radius squared, we don't actually have the mass of the sun in this problem, so we can't end up using that. However, if we look at a force diagram for the Earth, the only force that we can really assume is acting on it is a force of gravity on the Earth by the sun. So our net force here is just the same thing as that force of gravity. So we can use an equation for the net force, which is Newton's second law of motion. Our net force is the mass times our acceleration. We know the mass from a previous problem, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th power kilograms is the estimated mass of the Earth, times that 0 0.00595 meters per square second for our acceleration. So our net force is going to end up being 3.56 times 10 to the power of 22 newtons. That is going to be the magnitude of that force of gravity on the Earth by the Sun. Now the second part of this is how does the force of the Earth by the Sun compare to the force on the Sun by the Earth? Well, for this one, our force of gravity on the Earth by the Sun should be equivalent to the force of gravity on the Sun by the Earth. What is different between them, though, is that one of them would have a negative sign. This right here is Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if the Sun is exerting some force of gravity on the Earth, the Earth would exert, exert that same force back on the Sun. The only difference would be which way the force would be applied. Alternatively, you could argue this using Newton's law of gravitation. Because this is the equation we use to figure out the force of gravity between any two objects. The mass of object 1 times the mass of object 2 times a gravitational constant divided by the distance between them squared. Well, it's the same numbers regardless of which object we are looking at, either the Earth or the Sun, because both of them have the same mass and both of them have the same distance between them. And that gravitational constant is constant. So either of those could be an explanation for how those two forces compare.